Good morning and welcome to Kuala Lumpur here in Malaysia. We've had a lovely few days here uh, exploring KL. First time here in quite some time now. We've just had a bit of a stop over here on the way back from our two weeks amazing trip around Sri Lanka. But anyway, today's an exciting day. We're going to be flying out to Langkawi up in the north coast of Malaysia. This is going to be my first time uh, venturing out of the Greater Kuala Lumpur sort of region in Malaysia, so it should be a really good one. And today we're flying Batik Air. We're actually going to be flying in business class. Originally was going to be flying with Malaysia Airlines in economy class, but I booked a fully flexible fare because I knew there was plenty of options on the route. And when I checked Batty Air's business class, it was only 130 Australian dollars or 398 ringgit. -ish. So yeah, this uh, offer was uh, too good to kind of refuse. So I cancelled the Malaysia Airlines flight and booked Batty Air. It was a real pain, uh, the whole Batik Air booking experience. Originally I tried to give them my business flying from Taipei to Perth via KL. I had a really good flight, only 350 Australian dollars, but I kept trying and trying and trying. It just kept declining my card for no apparent reason. So I um, was really trying to give Batik Air my business. This I was trying to make the booking from Sri Lanka, so I don't know if it's because I wasn't in Malaysia or not on the Australian website, I couldn't really work it out. And then I saw this business class flight, I was also trying to book this to no success uh, from Sri Lanka. But I gave it one more shot when I got to Malaysia and it went through. So a bit of a persistence finally paid off and I'm flying Batik Air business class today. Really don't know what to expect too much with Batik Air, Melinda Air, Lion Air. The websites all seem to be quite interchangeable and the information's quite conflicting. But yeah, I'm not expecting a huge amount of, of a flashy experience, but for the price I'm paying, really, really looking forward to the experience. I believe I get um, a much a nicer recliner style seat with plenty of leg room probably similar to your version or Qantas uh, 737s and yeah I do get a free baggage allowance and I'd get a complimentary meal but I don't think there'll be any fancy drinks or and I don't think there's lounge access as well for the promo fare. So without further ado um, let's head to the Kuala Lumpur International Airport now. Really wish I'd checked the prices of Grab before I arrived in KL because they're a lot more cheaper than I thought. Um, getting the KL Express train, which itself is a really amazing train. It goes 160 kilometers an hour at times, but uh, getting to and from the KL Central Station is a real hassle. I'm in Central KL and it's still five kilometers from the KL Station. So yeah, only costs a few dollars to get a grab to the station but it's going to be like a 20 minute ride just to get to the station. So for an extra 10, 20 ring in it, in retrospect, I would have just um, got a grab and gone straight to the airport, save the hassle. But never mind, I have booked a return ticket. So yeah, let's try and go to the station now, try and get on one of those express trains. And once we're at the airport, I'll see you there. Just a little bit of route information before we head to the airport this morning. So Langkawi is about 450 kilometres or a 50 minute flight north up the coast of Peninsula Malaysia from Kuala Lumpur. Langkawi and the archipelago of the 99 islands that form Langkawi actually forms part of the wider Kedar district which is the most northerly um, most district in Peninsula Malaysia. Interestingly enough, the island of Langkawi is actually that close to Thailand. It's only merely a kilometres from the nearest Thai islands. Now that we're on the KLI Express train just about to arrive at the airport, just a little bit of information. Cost 55 a ring at one way or about 18 Australian dollars, although there is discounts if you book online or also a return ticket. If you are needing to go to KLI 2, aka you're flying AirAsia, take another three minutes to get to KLI 2. 
So yeah, allow a bit of extra time for that. But yeah, it covers a very lengthy 55 kilometer journey in just 28 minutes. So really, definitely, probably the fastest way to get to KLIA Airport. This only stands true really, however, if you're staying close by to KL Central Station because if you're staying anywhere else in KL by the time you get to KL uh, Central Station to get the train, much of this time saving you would have lost and it's only marginally more to get a taxi or a grab. So in that case might be the best way. Anyway, once you arrive at KLIA1, it's very easy to get to the departure hall from uh, the train. Just take the escalators up and that will lead you into the departures hall. So yeah, here in Malaysia's Kuala Lumpur International Airport, there obviously is two main uh, terminals. Basically, almost all airlines apart from AirAsia and a few other select budget carriers all fly from KLI-1. And yeah, it's uh, basically all under the one roof here, the check-in hall. So yeah, check-in for Batty Air is very straightforward today. They're checking in both international and domestic flights from the one location. Not overly busy, so that's a good sign. But flying business, I get priority check-in anyway. So yeah, I was all checked in and ready to go to Langkawi in a matter of no time. And there's a good glimpse over to KLI 2 right over there. Anyway, it is time now to head to the gate. Most people are generally flying internationally out of KLI 1, but yeah, we can't uh, go there today. We've got a domestic flight to catch. So yeah, it's a separate uh, gate to the left-hand side of the terminal for domestic flights. So yeah, let's head over there now, go through a security and get ready to travel to the tax-free island of Langkawi. For your information, as we now head to the domestic departure gates, Kuala Lumpur International Airport is indeed one of the busiest airports in Southeast Asia and is indeed a massive uh, transit hub for flights all over the world. Immediately prior to the pandemic, it hosted a whopping 62.3 million yearly passenger movements. That was in 2019. Traffic is slowly recovering, though in 2022 it's still only a fraction of its former statistics with around 25 million yearly passenger movements. But yeah, this is very much likely to continue improving on an upward trajectory to pre-pandemic levels in a matter of no time, I would think. Certainly can't help but notice, I definitely prefer KLI 1 over KLI 2, definitely in terms of the user experience and overall enjoyment of travelling through the airport. A lot more to see and do, a lot better shopping and dining and all sorts of other options here at KLI 1, but yeah, definitely do um, understand KLI 2 gets the job done as a terminal catering towards, you know, the low-cost carrier such as AirAsia, so yeah, in all fairness, yeah, I totally understand the need for KLI 2, definitely keeps the prices down. Anyway, we are now uh, airside in the domestic uh, departures area of KLI 1, can't help but notice it's a lot quieter than the international area of the terminal. So without further ado, let's make the relatively short walk to our gate a B5 for this afternoon's flight taking us to Langkawi. Let's have a look at our Boeing 737-800 in more detail. So yeah, our aircraft taking us up to Langkawi today is approximately 8.5 years old. We're registration number 9 Mike Lima Delta Delta. It's operated exclusively for the Lion Air group of airlines since around 2015. I don't believe it's directly owned by Lion Air Group or any of its associated airlines. So yeah, first I flew for Bati Air Indonesia back in April 2015 when it was first delivered to them. Then it's flown under Melindo Air in Malaysia around 2016. Then it was transferred to Batik Air Indonesia in March 2020. And yeah, as of most recently, 
as only a month or so before this flight it's come into the hands of Batik Air Malaysia. So yeah, pretty interesting history on this lovely looking at Batik Air Malaysia Boeing 737-800. Well, it really is hard to understand who actually owns this aircraft as the information about the aircraft just seems to suggest it's owned by a hidden Elisa. So yeah, be really curious to know who actually is leasing this aircraft out to the line group of airlines. And just like that, it is now time to aboard our beautiful looking 737-800 taking us up to Langkawi this afternoon. Boarding's called around 15 minutes behind schedule or around 1.30pm. Not too in a rush to board, however, supposed to get priority boarding flying business class, but don't really take advantage of it to be honest, boarding just in the middle of all other passengers to be honest. Now as we enter our aircraft taking us up to Langkawi this afternoon, welcome on board our Batik Air Boeing 737-800. So dual class configuration Batik Air 737 that we're on today has a total of 162 seats of which there is 12 in business class and 150 out the back in economy class. Business class configuration has a total of 12 seats. That is over three rows in a 2-2 configuration with recliner seats. According to Batik Air Malaysia's website, you'll find the business class recliner seats have a seat pitch, a very generous seat pitch of up to 45 inches, while their economy class seats have a reasonably a decent 32 inches of seat pitch. Shortly after taking my seat in row 3A, which is at the rear of the business class cabin, and after being welcomed on board by a friendly cabin crew member, there's a bottle of water that I find at my seat. So yeah, that's my pre-departure uh, beverage for this flight. Really didn't expect any more anyway, to be honest. And yeah, the recliner seats look really comfortable, and leg room is really, really good. Really quite excessive for a flight that's not even an hour long. And yeah, comfortable leather seat. Got a fold out tray table. It looks plenty uh, big enough in size. Also folds back out in half as well. So that's really convenient. You also got a little sort of cocktail sort of table in the center console, which is good if you just want to sort of have a drink without um, getting out the whole tray table. From the center console as well, you've got the in-flight entertainment system also pops out of there as well. Also at your seat, there was also um, a pillow and a blanket, so that was a really nice touch. Didn't really expect it for a domestic flight as such a short duration. And the crew even did a hot towel service, so that was really, really impressive. A lot of airlines have phased this out blaming the pandemic, so it's good that they still keep it. And yeah, in the seat pocket, you got fairly standard seat literature as well, in-flight safety card, and also the in-flight menu and magazine. So yeah, that's good to know. Just having a look at the food and drink menu in more detail, it's really more relevant if you were to be flying economy class as the meals already included in a business class. But yeah, it really looks similar to the way AirAsia's menu is. Good range of meals and drinks and snacks at what look like very, very affordable prices. That's good to know. But yeah, apart from that, it's looking like a very good first impression of our experience today. Very, very empty cabin. So yeah, it should be a really good flight. So yeah, what better time now to just sit back, relax, and uh, enjoy our taxi out of the runway here at KLI International Airport. And yeah, once we're firmly in the air, I'll then offer my further thoughts and assessment of Batik Air's domestic business class on our flight up to Langkawi today. So just sit back, relax and enjoy for the next little bit.
And just like that, we're well and truly on our way to a cruising altitude for the short flight up to Langkawi this afternoon. There's absolutely beautiful scenery down there as we cruise up the coastline of Peninsula Malaysia. And there's many beautiful pristine tropical islands down below as well. But yeah, it's going to be a very quick flight up the coast today. So yeah, we better get right into our assessment of the Batty Air Business Class experience right here, right now. So yeah, first things first, let's have a look in a bit more detail about the business class lever recliner seats. So yeah, very, very comfortable seats these. As I suggested before, the legroom is very, very good. Um, de definitely a very generous recline on these seats as well. They even have um, a footrest and everything like that. So yeah, in terms of recliner seats uh, flying around Southeast Asia or a domestic flight, they're absolutely more than fine and more than comfortable. Definitely rate these recliner seats. Definitely think they're probably a little bit better than Virgin Australia and Qantas's on their 737s. Yeah, it just seems a little bit more polished overall. With these business class recliner seats, as I stated before, the tray table uh, pops out from a left hand armrest while the in flight entertainment screen pops out of the right hand centre console. At your seat you'll find an adjustable headrest and also the leg rest and also you've got full uh, seat controls as well so you can sit in a variety of different ways. So that's really really good on the Batik Air Boeing 737 Business Class. Next up we've got the Batik Air Business Class Dining Experience flying domestically here in Malaysia. Before we took off a friendly cabin crew came around and invited me whether I'd like to have lunch on today's flight. They also came around to take my drink order as well which was an option of a hot drink or a soft drink something like that. So yeah it did, lunch for today's flight was a chicken sandwich. Didn't really look exactly like a chicken sandwich but yeah it tasted like a chicken sandwich and yeah, it was okay. Presentation was nothing amazing. Also got a slice of cake as well, which that was nice. But yeah, overall it wasn't anything too amazing, but I wasn't expecting a huge amount on such a ridiculously short flight anyway. Alongside this also got a fairly acceptable cup of white coffee as well. Nothing amazing, but it wasn't too bad either. And the crew came around later to offer a second one, which I gladly accepted. In terms of the in-flight entertainment screen, it does pop out from the center console. Didn't really bother using it on this flight. I'm not sure if it was even uh, turned on for such a short domestic flight. But yeah, um, I guess that's um, where you will be getting your entertainment from if you're flying Batik Air in business class on one of their much longer regional international flights throughout Southeast Asia or even from their flights between Malaysia and Australia. And just like that, after having our lunch today and spending a little bit of time Briefly having a look at the features of our recliner seat and the other offerings on Batty Air's domestic business class flight. We're pretty well ready to commence our descent into Langkawi International Airport. So I'll have to reserve all my thoughts and overall assessment of Batty Air's business class experience until once we get on the ground in Langkawi. But yeah, for now, what better time just to sit back, relax, enjoy our amazing descent uh, through the Langkawi Archipelago, absolutely beautiful a tropical island landscape down there. So yeah, just sit back and relax until we get on the ground in Langkawi, where I offer my final thoughts and assessment on this flight.
Now that we're firmly on the ground here at what looks like a fairly quiet Langkawi International Airport, before I get to my final Aussie Jet Set Out score index for this flight, good time now I'll offer my initial assessment and thoughts on the Batty Air Business Class experience and whether it's really worth uh, paying for what seemingly seems like a dirt cheap business class fare. So yeah, in short, if you're happy to dish out 90 US dollars or approximately 130 Australian dollars for about a one hour flight in a very comfortable business class recliner seat with a fairly modest servering offering, then I say, why not? At the end of the day, this is a very, very comfortable flight with Batty Air. thought the service was really good uh, for such a short flight and the seat was incredibly comfortable. And in anyone's uh, guess, Back home in Australia, you are simply not going to get a business class flight that cheap, even on a one hour flight between Sydney and Melbourne. The cheapest business class flights I've seen in Australia with Virgin Australia or Rex were about a one hour similar length flight, start at around $299. If it's Qantas, it's going to be hundreds of dollars more. So yeah, then that I wouldn't really classify Bay Air's business class as a budget business class per se, even though it was incredibly affordable on domestic routes in uh, Malaysia and indeed around Asia. But at the end of the day, it's not exactly up to the same standard as flagship full service airlines either. So yeah, the business class offerings are a little bit trimmed down to be honest, unless you're getting a full uh, price fair, you're not getting lounge access, you're not getting a really extensive dining experience, you're not getting free flow drinks or alcohol or anything like that. So yeah, it is it is a business class with a comfortable leather seat, but yeah, not a, an absence of service or offerings, but yeah, not the most extensive range either. So yeah, I'll come back to the overall value of the Batty Air business class, particularly if you were to be flying this uh, product on longer flights between Australia and Malaysia, a little bit later in my final score index for this flight. But yeah, it is now time. Let's indeed get to the Aussie Jet Setter score index. And first up, we've got ground handling. Really couldn't fault Batty Air in this regard. Check-in was very, very smooth and efficient. Priority check-in meant I was free in absolutely no time and bags arrived on time in Langkawi. So I give them a solid 18 out of 20. Next up we've got crew and in-flight service. Couldn't really fault the crew to be honest. Very, very friendly. Very, very attentive. Definitely um, treated you like you are in business class. So hard to complain there. The in-flight meal was acceptable. Nothing amazing but didn't really expect too much on a dirt cheap, a business class airfare on a very, very short flight. So really hard to find too many complaints. I'll give them 16 out of 20. Next up, we've got entertainment. I only give Batty Air 10 out of 20. They do have an in-flight entertainment uh, screen, though it didn't seem to either be working or be switched on for a use of this flight. So really hard to give them any ranking points for this. Although at the end of the day, didn't really need entertainment for such a short flight anyway. Next up, we've got the condition of the aircraft and the cabin. Look very much like a stock standard Boeing 737-800. About eight and a half years old, looked in reasonably good and nick. And yeah, that business class cabin was very, very cosy and inviting in indeed. So give them a solid 16 out of 20. And finally, we got value for money. At the end of the day, in anyone's book, if you can get a business class airfare in a genuine business class seat for under 100 US dollars, in anyone's books, that's always going to be a really good deal in my opinion. That being said, however, it is important to note that airfares domestically are incredibly cheap in Malaysia. Flights on this route are often only $30 in economy, and some routes in Malaysia are only $15 in economy. So yeah, this flight is significantly many times more than the price of an economy class ticket. And yeah, for most people in Malaysia, with these sort of prices, it's really excessive flying business class when the tickets are so cheap anyway and the flights are so short. So yeah, I understand why business class is so cheap because the cabin is practically empty and they may as well get something rather than nothing. 
So at the end of the day, well, I think Batty Air offers a very, very competitive and affordable way to, to enjoy business class luxury when flying around Malaysia or short haul around Asia. I'm not really so convinced they would offer as much great value if flying between Australia and Malaysia just because you're still on recliner seats on a much longer flight and the, you know, the business class service seems quite limited. Um, for quite a longer flight. So yeah, I'm not really sure the value would stack up as much with Batty Air, especially when Budget Carrier Air Asia X actually has lie flat seats. If you just want a comfortable seat with a minimal service offering, that might be the way to go. And you also got competition with Malaysia Airlines and all that sort of stuff as well. So yeah, um, I think the value for money for the flight I took today was pretty darn good. But yeah, not really sure if you were to pay seven, eight hundred, even a thousand dollars one way for Batty Air in business class between Australia and Malaysia, it would be that great a value to be honest. But yeah, for this flight, I'll give them sixteen out of twenty. So all in all, when handing down my Aussie Jet Setter score index for this flight, comes in at a very respectable 76 out of 100. So very, very pleasant experience on Batty Air today. For under 100 US dollars, I got to experience a business class, which is saying you don't usually get to experience for that sort of price. Would I say it's an absolute must-do or a necessity to fly business class traveling domestically in Malaysia? Probably not. But yeah, it was a really nice experience nonetheless today. Um, very very comfortable seat and very friendly crew and a modest service as well so that was all right but yeah pretty enjoyable flight overall today with batty air anyway if you have enjoyed this flight review with batty air in business class really appreciate it give a like hit that subscribe and bell button so you won't miss another one on the channel Plenty more flight reviews from my recent trip around Asia to come in coming weeks and months on the channel. Plenty of other also travel and aviation content. Got my usual walking tours, hiking tours, driving tours, all that sort of stuff on the channel. Really diverse range of aviation and travel content for you guys. In the meantime, if you'd like, you can also visit my dedicated socials. I'll put a link to the description below as well got my discord server for fans and community of the channel to come together to chat all things aviation and travel also got my instagram page for all that short form content covering where i am in the real world so feel free to check out that as well and lastly you can also visit my website aussiejetsetter.com.au where you'll see all those flight reviews industry news destination guides frequent flyer hacks and more until the next flight review, uh, thank you very much for watching today and safe travels wherever that might take you.